Once upon a time, in a world not unlike our own, there was a young boy named Leo. Leo was ordinary in every way, average grades, a few close friends, and a knack for daydreaming about being something more. One day, a letter arrived at his doorstep, inviting him to a prestigious magic school hidden deep in the mountains, a place where his wildest dreams could come true. Excited yet nervous, Leo packed his bags and set off for this mysterious school. Upon arrival, he was awestruck by the grand halls filled with magical creatures, enchanted classrooms, and students who could do incredible things. However, Leo felt out of place. He was just a normal kid among extraordinary beings, and despite his best efforts, he struggled to fit in. One day, during a particularly challenging transfiguration class, Leo stumbled upon an ancient spellbook hidden in the school's vast library. The book was filled with powerful spells, including one that caught his eye, a transformation spell that could turn him into any creature he desired. Feeling invisible and desperate to stand out, Leo decided to use the spell to transform into a grey folk so sleek, smart, and undeniable cute. The transformation was an instant success. Leo's new form was adorable, with soft grey fur perky ears, and bright, intelligent eyes. When he returned to the school as a grey fox, everything changed. Suddenly, he was the center of attention. Other students admired his courage and uniqueness, and he quickly became popular. Leo reveled in the newfound attention and admiration, enjoying every moment of his life as an anthro grey fox. Weeks passed, and Leo's popularity only grew. He was invited to all the best parties, befriended the most talented students and even earned the respect of the teachers. Yet, despite all the adoration, there was a small voice in the back of his mind that questioned whether this new life was truly fulfilling. One night, as Leo wandered the moonlit corridors of the school, he found himself in front of the mirror he had used to cast the transformation spell. He stared at his reflection, seeing the charming grey fox that everyone loved. But as he looked deeper, he began to remember who he was before Rhea an ordinary boy who had always felt like he had nothing to offer. In that moment, Leo had a sudden moment of clarity. He realized that while his life as a grey fox brought him popularity and praise, it was all based on a facade. The friends he had made, the attention he received it was all because of the transformation. If he returned to his true form, would he be left with nothing once again? Leo thought long and hard. The truth was painful but undeniable. He had felt empty before the transformation because he hadn't yet discovered his true worth. Now, as a grey fox, he had found acceptance, but it wasn't the acceptance he truly needed. He had been chasing external validation instead of looking within himself. But then, a new thought emerged. As a grey fox, he had the chance to reinvent himself and not just in appearance but in character. He didn't need to change back to prove his worth he could use this new form to become the person he had always wanted to be, someone who was confident, kind, and genuinely cared for others. With a deep breath, Leo made a decision. He would remain as a grey fox, not because of the popularity, but because it symbolized the transformation he wanted to make inside. He vowed to be true to himself, to build real friendships, and to grow into someone who could stand tall in any form of whether human or fox. From that day on, Leo embraced his new life with a renewed sense of purpose. He became a leader among his peers, not because of his appearance, but because of the kindness and wisdom he showed. He realized that he hadn't started with nothing he had simply been searching for the right way to bring out the best in himself. And so, Leo remained a grey fox. But more importantly, he became someone who was loved and respected for who he truly was inside and out. In the small town of Brightwood, there lived a curious ten-year-old girl named Mia. Mia loved exploring the forests near her home, always hoping to discover something new. One summer afternoon, while wandering deeper into the woods than she ever had before, she stumbled upon a hidden glade. The air was thick with the scent of pine and the sound of rustling leaves, and Mia felt an inexplicable pull toward the center of the glade. As she pushed aside some tall ferns, she saw something that made her eyes widen in disbelief. There, sitting on a moss-covered rock, was a creature unlike anything she had ever seen. It was about the size of a large dog, with a body covered in vibrant multicolored scales that shimmered in the sunlight. Its four eyes blinked curiously at her, and three strange heads perched on long, 
flexible neck seemed to smile in unison. The creature's skin was a mix of teal and orange, with small, flame-like protrusions around its head and tail. It looked both bizarre and magical, as if it had stepped out of a dream. Mia couldn't believe her eyes. She had always imagined discovering a new species, but this was beyond her wildest dreams. The creature made a soft, trilling sound, almost like a laugh, and Mia giggled in response. She decided to name it Gadzook, after the silly exclamation her grandfather often used. Over the next few days, Mia visited the glade as often as she could, bringing Gadzook treats like fruits and nuts. Gadzook quickly became fond of Mia, and they would spend hours playing games with Gadzook playfully chasing her around the glade with its three heads bobbing in different directions. Mia knew she had to tell someone about her discovery, but she was afraid that if she told the adults, they might take Gadzook away for study or put it in a zoo. So, she decided to share her secret with her best friend, Liam, who was just as curious and adventurous as she was. When Liam saw Gadzook for the first time, he was speechless. The two kids made a pact to keep Gadzook's existence a secret, at least until they could figure out a way to protect it. They spent their summer researching in the local library, trying to find any mention of a creature like Gadzook in ancient books or myths, but they found nothing. It seemed that Gadzook truly was a new species, completely unknown to the world. As the summer drew to a close, Mia and Liam knew they couldn't keep Gadzook a secret forever. They decided to contact a kind-hearted biologist named Dr. Rivera, who lived in their town. Dr. Rivera was known for her love of animals and her dedication to their protection. Mia and Liam trusted that she would know what to do. One evening, they led Dr. Rivera to the glade. When she saw Gadzook, her eyes filled with wonder just as Mia's had when she first discovered the creature. Dr. Rivera promised to help them keep Gadzook safe and out of the public eye, at least until they could understand more about it. In the months that followed, Dr. Rivera worked with Mia and Liam to study Gadzook. They discovered that Gadzook was a gentle herbivore, with a unique ability to mimic sounds, which it used to communicate with the children. They even found out that Gadzook had a family, and soon, the once hidden glade became home to several Gadzooks, all thriving in their secluded paradise. Mia's discovery eventually led to the creation of a protected wildlife reserve in the forest, where the Gadzooks could live in peace, away from prying eyes. The world never found out about the Gadzooks, but Mia didn't mind. She knew that she had discovered something truly special, and more importantly, she had found a lifelong friend in Gadzook, and so, the Gadzooks continued to live happily in the forest, and Mia's heart swelled with pride every time she thought about her incredible discovery. She had found something that no one else had, and in doing so, she had learned the true value of friendship, trust, and the wonders of the natural world.